What is up, bros and gals? Bloodburger here. We survived the apocalypse. It's 2013. Um, I hope everybody had a happy new year, and I'm guessing some of you might have received some new games, maybe even a new PC, uh, and you're ready to start doing a little bit of live streaming. Um, if that's you, I recently discovered a new program called Open Broadcaster Software. Um, this is a super light application for those of you that A, might not be able to afford some of the other casting programs that are already available out there, uh, B, already have software but you're interested in something new or a little bit less buggy, uh, and C, <clears throat> excuse me, have older PCs and are looking for something that's a bit easier on your existing hardware. OBS is a great program and in this video I'm going to show you how to make the most out of it for PC or console broadcasting. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the basics of getting started in live streaming. Some of you might be familiar with my older tutorials on live streaming. Um, they're still absolutely viable and if you understand the basics of bit rates, upload and download speeds, and computer hardware, feel free to skip ahead to part 3 of this video. Uh, for those of you that are still with me, the first thing you need to know are your computer's limits. Number one, if you can't run the game you're trying to broadcast at at least 30 frames per second, you should reconsider doing so until you've upgraded your PC's hardware. If you're streaming console games, this isn't quite as important. Just make sure your capture device's requirements are met and you should be good. Once you're up and running, the next step is to determine your internet connection's capabilities. For this, we'll need to run a speed test. Open up speedtest.net in your web browser. And once it's done doing its thing, you're going to want to click the Begin Test button in the center of the page. Once this test is done, it'll spit out three numbers at you. Um, let's just go ahead and go over each one one by one. Ping is basically the amount of time it takes your computer to send information to another computer and receive that information back. The closer this number is to zero, the better. Um, this is an important number if you're playing a lot of online games as you want to have the fastest reaction times possible. This, mag this number is magnified even further in FPS titles and fighting games. Not quite as important in MMOs or slower paced titles. Download speed is important uh, for, you guessed it, downloading things. Uh, the higher this number is, the faster you can receive data, files, and information. Um, this number isn't in as important for our live streaming as it is for watching other broadcaster streams. Um, upload speed is the number that is absolutely criti critical. Live streams in 2013 are going to be a dime a dozen. Um, it's very important to have good quality, and in my opinion, an HD quality broadcaster shouldn't have less than 2 megabits per second. Um, there are always ways to work with less, but your quality will suffer. Now that we understand the hardware and know what our internet can do, let's get acquainted with the OBS interface. The first thing you're going to want to do is head over to obsproject.com. Click the download button and download either the newest test build or the latest stable installer. Once the program is unzipped or installed, go ahead and fire it up. You'll see that the interface is quite simple, and if you're familiar with any other broadcasting software packages, you'll quickly recognize that OBS shares all of the same features. Uh, you should probably have an empty scene set up by default um, for this particular instance since I'm recording using the software. I already have my desktop selected. We'll go over all of that stuff in just a bit. Um, you should have an empty scene when you start it up for the first time, uh, so you'll need to add sources and edit it to your liking. But before we do that, let's just take a quick look at the settings. Clicking the settings button will bring up a new window here. The first tab is the general tab. Here you can set up multiple profiles or adjust your home language. Uh, next are the encoding settings. Quality balance is basically how crisp your picture is. Typically I leave this between 8 and 10. Um, you don't really start to see a decrease in quality until you're at about 5 or 6. If you have a very slow PC, you can try adjusting this for better performance, but then again, if you have to, um, you probably shouldn't be streaming on your current setup. Underneath that is probably the most important setting that you can adjust, bitrate. On the left is the max bitrate. Uh, this is the number that the stream will broadcast at until there's a need to dip into the buffer. Um, the buffer is meant to be sort of a turbo boost that we use when there are a lot of things happening on screen. Say, for instance, um, a 60 frame per second FPS shooter, um, you know, a racing game that's running at 60 frames per second. 
Um, it's basically a little bit of extra bandwidth that OBS will use when we need a little bit more oomph. Um, these, these numbers are determined by your upload speed that we found out by running the speed test over at speedtest.net. Um, right now I have these numbers set to a ridiculous number because I'm simply recording. Um, typically you're not going to want to use uh, bit rates this high because most of your viewers won't be able to watch it. Um, usually I give myself a little bit of overhead when I'm setting these numbers. So if, for example my bit rate is 5 megabits, megabits per second, um, I could set my max bit rate at about 2500 um, and then I'd set the buffer to maybe 3500. Now keep in mind, like I said before, you, you might have a huge upload speed and you're able to broadcast at 10 megabits per second. Um, you have to remember that everyone is not going to be able to watch that, so don't go too crazy. Uh, typically anywhere between 2000 to 3500 megabits per second is enough, uh, depending on what kind of game you're playing. So what you're going to want to do is experiment with these settings until you found the perfect medium of what your viewers can watch and where you want your quality to be. Next is the audio encoding. Uh, usually I leave this at default AAC uh, codec and a bit rate of at least 9600 or 96,000 rather to about 192,000 will do. Um, after that we have the broadcast settings. Uh, here you can set your uh, mode where you have two options. Live stream which will broadcast directly to your channel. Uh, whether it's Ustream, Twitch TV, Own3D, that's going to be up to you or file output only which is what I'm using right now to record this video. Uh, it's a local recording that saves to the location that you specify in the file path. Um, no one sees this and it's a great way to make sure your broadcast is up to snuff and ready to go before you actually go live. Um, let's go back to the live stream mode and go over everything here as this is probably going to be the way most of you, you, you guys use the program. Um, first things first is the streaming service. So uh, you're going to use either Twitch, Own3D, they have Vaughn Live here, Instagib, um, Ustream, you know, other popular services you can set up with custom. That's going to be up to you. Um, under FMS you choose the FMS URL rather, you choose the server that is closest to you. I'm in LA, so I'm using LACA Secondary. Uh, your stream key, which you're going to have to get off of Justin TV, most likely, if you're going to be broadcasting on Twitch TV, because I don't believe they have incorporated your stream key number into the Twitch interface just as yet. Um, auto reconnect, I leave checked. Um, and the auto reconnect timeout, just leave it at default. Um, delay is helpful if you want to keep other players from ghosting you in games like League of Legends, Dota, um, first person shooters basically this number is in seconds and it will put a delay on what you do and what your uh, viewers actually see in the stream chat or in the stream window. Uh, dashboard link is left blank and if you want to record to your hard drive while you stream you're going to want to check this save to file box and then specify the directory in which you want the file to go. Um, lastly, you can set hotkeys to start and start, uh, start and stop the stream. Excuse me. Um, F9 is usually the default. That's usually where I leave it. Um, seems to work out just fine for me. If that's a hotkey in one of your games, you can always change this to whatever you want it to be. Next up is the video tab. Uh, base resolution is whatever your monitor or capture device is set to. So if you're playing PC games at 1920 by 1080, that's what you should have here. Um, if you're broadcasting Xbox games or PS3 games at 720p, uh, you're going to want to set this to 1280 by 720. Um, I don't worry too much about the monitor, um, although it does have some uses that I won't go into in this video because I don't want to confuse you guys. Um, resolution downscale is typically left alone. Um, there's uses for that as well, but again, I won't go into it. Um, FPS is another very important number. Uh, the number you place here will greatly affect your PC's performance. Um, if you don't have a good computer, leave this at 30. Um, if you have an amazing PC and you really want to blow your viewers away with your quality, try 59 or 60. Um, these numbers are typically the only ones that you should be using here, 30, 59, or 60, based uh, depending on what you're streaming. Um, Usually if you play console games you'll want this set to 60 if the game you're playing supports that, if it runs at 60 frames per second. Um, if it doesn't or you experience issues with performance, drop it down to 30. Um, lastly, disable arrow at startup should be checked. This will turn off any extra effects produced by Windows, freeing up CPU usage for a smoother experience while you're broadcasting. 
So moving on to the audio tab, this is where you'll set up your microphone. Uh, it's really as simple as selecting your device in the top drop down uh, list here. I have a Microsoft Live Chat LX3000 headset, so that's what I have selected. Um, you can set a push to talk key if you'd like to. I usually leave all of this uh, delay and hotkey stuff alone. Um, they also give you a mic boost option if your volume is a little bit too low, but typically the default settings are fine. Finally, we have the advanced settings tab. I leave uh, use multi-threaded optimizations checked and the process priority class set at the default which is high. Um, next is the X264 CPU preset. Um, this is another very important setting. Uh, this drop down basically controls the amount of CPU power that OBS will use to encode the broadcast. Um, there's seven settings from slow up to ultra fast with super fast being the default. The slower you go, the more CPU processing power you're going to be using. Um, this in turn will allow you to stream at a lower bit rate. Um, typically super fast, very fast, faster, fast, medium um, are fine depending on how much muscle you have. Basically you don't want to set this too slow if you don't have a very good processor. Um, play with this in different bit rates until you find a good medium between performance and visual quality. Personally, I've found that super fast works just fine. Uh, we're going to ignore the rest of the settings in this tab unless you're experimenting. Um, I'm not going to go into specifics in an attempt to keep from confusing you too much. Alright, now that the stage is set, let's go ahead and add the elements of the scene. The typical live stream has maybe the game window, uh, a webcam that shows the viewers the broadcaster, maybe an image or graphic or two. Uh, the easiest way to get these into OBS is by adding sources that you can use in any scene that you create. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is add the start preview button, or press this preview stream button rather, uh, so that we can see what we're adding to the scene without actually broadcasting. Um, you're going to want to right click the source window, and uh, you have several options here. Number one is software capture. Uh, this is basically what you use when you want to capture your desktop. Um, it's good for games like League of Legends, uh, which have the game browser, and then pops up the game window maybe later on. Another popular use is uh, Battlefield 3, since it uses a web browser to, br uh, to launch. Um, so you're going to want to click that, enter a name for the source. Uh, for this example, I'm going to call it Desktop hit enter uh, and then you have a few options after actually naming the source uh, you can capture an entire monitor so uh, monitor 2 is what I'm going to be working with here go ahead and select that and hit OK and bam my desktop pops up in the uh, preview window now you can change this by right clicking the source again you click properties um, so you can also let's see here capture a window so just for an example, let's capture my Google Chrome window. All right, let's change that again. And let's try capturing a region of the screen. So you would select subregion, select region, and then this big uh, rectangle pop-up. You can resize that, All right? And then when you're done, click the button, and it captures that region of the screen. All right, so now that we're capturing my desktop, let's go ahead and add uh, or play with the other settings, the other sources that we can add here. So right-click in the uh, sources window again, and now let's try adding an image. And let's just call this one. OK. Now you would browse for the image that you're uh, going to use. Uh, in this instance, let's just use my new avatar here. Click OK. Bam. Your uh, image is in there. You can also add a image slide so show so let's just leave it image size slideshow that's fine um, you can select the time between each image so basically this will be the time from when the first trans the first image transitions into the next image five seconds is fine let's add let's see here one two three four different images and click OK and just kinda take a look at see how this how this works here You'll see that the uh, images transition from one to uh, the next every five seconds. Uh, you can also add text. We'll just leave that uh, name text for now. Uh, let's make it bigger so you can see it. Change the font color to white. 
and then type a message. Thanks for watching. And bam, we got text. Um, now, uh, a lot of you are going to be capturing Xbox or uh, PS3. So the way you do that would be to right click the source window and select add video capture device. Now this is actually a two pronged um, source. So the first thing would be my capture card, right? Aver Media capture device, right? Click OK and then you will get a window like this with a bunch of different devices in it. Now you see that I have two uh, sources for my capture card and my webcam here, FF split overlays, DX story, all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that, but um, for my capture card, we're just going to select Aver Media this, and you can actually configure that. So um, you know you can change any of these settings. I really wouldn't mess with that stuff unless you really know what you're doing. Not usually uh, necessary, but um, for this example, let's just go ahead and hit OK, and then fire up the Xbox and see what happens. All right, so the Xbox is fired up. Now you see we're recording at uh, 1920 by 1080 right now. My Xbox is set to 1280 by 720, so you're going to want to make sure that you're running the right resolution, right? Custom resolution, you can either stretch that, make it smaller, make it bigger, whatever. Um, but yeah, we're just going to leave it at 1280 by 720 right now because that's what my Xbox is actually set to. So um, let's see here. Next, let's add one more video capture device, and that would be my webcam. Let's change the name here. Microsoft Life Cam Cinema, custom resolution 1280 by 720, frame rate's 30, it can't go any higher than that. Now, with the um, Xbox or the capture card and the webcam very important that you select play sound to desktop um, this feature was added in the latest beta build of OBS and it's not available in the older version so make sure you're having this if you're are using this version of the software if you're having problems getting your audio to work okay um, so go ahead and do that now you see that my webcams on chroma key this is important if you plan on using a green screen. Um, I'm not really going to go into specifics on that. I'll make another tutorial on that later on. But uh, the chroma key is used uh, when you're interested in doing a blue or green screen. Another thing to note is that when you're broadcasting console games at 60 FPS, you want to make sure you add the capture card or capture device first and then add your webcam. If you do it the other way around, your webcam frame rate, which is typically 30, uh, will be what OBS uses for the entire scene. Um, this could cause audio delay on the webcam and run your console feed at less than what you wanted it to run at. Um, for this tutorial, I really won't go into the specifics of the game capture. Um, it's highly experimental right now. It may cause you problems, so try it out at your own risk. Now, um, we have all the sources here. Let's go ahead and edit the scene. So, you click the Edit Scene button, and you click on the uh, element that you want to change, and you can click and resize the windows to the desired proportions that you would like. So, say you want your Xbox window to be full screen, boom, and have a webcam over it. You can just do something like this, right? Um, if you want that text to overlay on top of your Xbox, you need to make sure that it's at the top. So you move it to the, or actually you move it to the bottom, because whatever is at the bottom, think of this as layers. So whatever is at the top is going to be at the bottom of the pile, right? Um, the closer to the bottom, the higher the priority it has. So my text is overlaying my webcam, which is overlaying my Xbox right now, right? That's pretty much it. Um, once you have your scene set up, um, you can stop the preview and go ahead and click the uh, start streaming button and you're ready to go.
Alright, so I hope this gives you guys a good jumping off point for using open broadcaster software uh, and doing a little bit of live streaming. This is a great program and a great alternative to our old friend XSplit here. Um, broadcasting can be a very rewarding experience and can sometimes make playing games a lot more fun for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or send them to my Twitter and Facebook pages. Uh, as always, I'm Bloodburger, and thanks you guys for watching.